All right. And I'm sorry about that. The, yeah. Sorry about that. The, the defense uh, informed the court that they wanted to have a hearing on the outcry. So we're back on the record. Oh, no problem. I understand. All right. We're back on the record in 2020 CR 7353, State of Texas versus Wardale Lemon. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell and Ruben Herrera for the state. And for the defense? Leo Gonzalez for the defense. All right. And Mr. Lemon is present in the courtroom. Uh, the court had a hearing for the outcry. And I explained to both that we were taking those out of sequence just so that we wouldn't keep the jurors waiting. And the defense informed the court that there was an issue or maybe the defense has an issue with who the outcry witness is. Uh, it wasn't an ex parte per se. The defense just said, told the court while the state was outside, I want to have a hearing or an argument with regards to who the state intends to call as the outcry. I think that's fine. I, I, I agree. I, mean, I think we need technically need to take All right. And All right. Def I'm sorry, Des. No, 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 no problem. Defense. And so the only reason, Your Honor, we just want to make sure we get a ruling officially on the record about whether or not she can testify as an outcry hearing. Obviously, she can testify as a witness, but in, in order to get to certain things that are elicited that it would be te uh, hearsay, she has to be designated as an outcry. We understand she's been designated as an outcry. We understand based upon Madison's testimony. Yes, slow down. Sorry. And and counsel, you can have a seat. I don't take it oh, as a okay. sign of disrespect. It makes it easier for the court reporter to hear. And I find that when people sit down, people keep everything at this level. That makes sense. All right. Okay. So uh, we've heard from Madison that it was the first uh, adult that she told about what took place. Uh, the only uh, issue we have is that uh, we'd object because we believe that the outcry witness when she testified earlier uh, could not give a time frame as to when the outcry took place. She was unclear as to what exactly the child outcry to. And then based on Madison's testimony, um, it wasn't, it didn't appear to be an outcry as more of a response to a question. So we believe it's, it'd be improper to use this particular witness as an outcry witness. So that would be our objection. All right. State with regards to it being a question I do recall the complainant testifying that she was asked certain things. Yeah, I, and I think I can maybe clarify that with with the witness, but um, because it, it, if you recall earlier, um, Miss the outcry, our intended outcry witness, Miss Keeney, testified that Madison had referred to Wardell as creepy. Um, so I think it would make sense that at that point she would have said, "Did he do something to you?" Um, that's where I think it fell in, but without having them together. And, and, and that question about, did she ask you didn't come out and, until defense questioning, Madison did not say that on direct examination. So, um, I, I think Madison was consistent in that her stepmom was the first adult that she told and that she told her that, um, he touched her down there. I think the sexual acts themselves and the person who was told the first is consistent. And I think uh, for an outcry, I think the reliability of that outcry um, is established that way. All right, the court's concern or question is not that she told her anything. The court's focus at this time is the defense stating, whether it be on his recross or cross, that the complainant testified that the stepmother asked questions of her. And I think both parties would agree that an outcry is not an outcry where someone is asking you questions. I, I respectfully judge, I, I actually believe that would still be considered an outcry because it, it's still the first adult who is told that um, the defendant committed these acts, whether it's from them questioning them or or not, because there are multiple times when we have a forensic examiner as the outcry. Um, it's just it's just when the actual allegations first come out to an adult. The only thing I would say about that, Your Honor, is I do uh, I understand that forensic examiners do ask a question. However, theirs is a more of a general question. 
open-ended has anybody can you tell me anything that's happened this was in response to my question she was specifically told did this person do something to you and so to me it's not in the same way an outcry and in the way it's been framed in the notice of outcry that they filed was that this was a um just a random stating of what took place um after another conversation so I believe that what we've been given notice of as far as for what she's going to outcry to is unreliable in, in regards to the testimony we've received here today. Uh, in addition, the timing is something the court can consider. And since the outcry witness is unclear as to when the outcry took place, her own testimony this morning was that there was a, a lag in time before she actually reported it to police. Um, indicates there may have been supposedly some other outcry some other time. So we can't even be clear as to uh, when this alleged outcry took place. All right, Could I see the statement that was filed with the court and with defense. Yes, Judge. Thank you. All right, is there anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. All right, so I will allow the witness to uh, testify and the court will find that this is the outcry witness and that would be the stepmother, Miss Keeney. Is there anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, defense. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, State, if you'll bring uh, your witness in, please. We're ready. All right, for the jury. <laughs> All right, everyone, please be seated. All right, can you raise your right hand for me, please? 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. And ladies and gentlemen, the state called this witness while you were in the back. So she has been called as a witness by the state. Can you state your name for the record, please, and spell it? Linda Kinney, and that's L-Y-N-D-A, Kinney, K-E-E-N-E-Y. All right, state. Okay. Um, Ms. Kinney, um, where do you currently reside? In Shorts, Texas. Okay. Um, and um, do you know Madison Kinney? Yes, ma'am. How do you know her? She's my stepdaughter. Okay. Um, and who is your husband? Justin Kinney. Um, where did you live before you moved to Shirts? Uh, we lived in Houston, Texas. And then uh, before that, where did you live? Uh, before moving to Houston, we lived in San Antonio. Okay. Um, when did you move to Houston? Um, I would, ooh, I can't remember roughly what year. Um, I would say maybe 2016. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, we lived there for about three to four years. Okay. Do you have, other than um, your stepdaughter, Madison, do you have any other children that reside with you? Yes, ma'am. Who, who resides with you? Um, my daughter, Addison, from a previous marriage, and then Justin, I had a daughter, Charlotte. Okay. Um, how old is Addison? She's 13. Okay. Um, do you recall um, a day when um, Addison and Madison were, were with you and there was um, a statement made about a Wardell lemon. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what happened that day? Um, that day I was taking Addison and Madison to Target. Um, as we were driving to Target, the girls were just kind of being silly, talking about liking boys at school. And, you know, we were just kind of, you know, making little remarks, laughing, you know, just having girl talk. Um, and in the mix of that, Madison had stated, oh, daddy's going to be really strict when it's my time to date. Um, and I stated that, oh, daddy just wants you to date someone good from a good home and, you know, a good background. And then she stated, not someone like my mommy's boyfriend. And I said, she, of course, stated that he was creepy. And I didn't say anything. I didn't elaborate on it. I just kind of let her continue talking. And she kept on telling me that she wanted to tell me something. And I told her, of course, you can tell me something. And she begged multiple times for me not to tell her daddy, but she wanted to tell me something. Okay. Um, at that time, did you suspect it was, it was something involving Wardell Lemon? No. Okay. Um, do you, have you met Wardell Lemon? No, I have never physically introduced to one another just in passing I think maybe once okay and, and who is that Wardell yes um from my knowledge that's Amanda Madison's mother's boyfriend okay um so at that time did Madison tell you something about Mr. Lemon yes ma'am what did she tell you uh then she proceeded to tell me that he would describe it as you know rubbing her belly rubbing her tummy and then he would put his hands down her pants and touch her, you know, she would say her lady parts. Okay. Um, what was Madison's, um, let's say, emotional state while she was telling you this? She was crying. Um, and what did you do when you heard this information? I, of course, was naturally crying. Um, why she was telling me this and we didn't go inside the store. I just, you know, drove out of the parking lot and went straight home and told Justin. Um, how soon after that did police get involved? Um, immediately, right when I told him, he called the police. Did Madison tell you where it was that uh, Mr. Lennon would touch her? What location? Just 
she said, you know, she would kind of point and show me. I, I mean, um, geographically located, like, because you were in Houston at the time. Yes. Where did it occur? She said it would occur when she'd go to her mother's house. And where was her mother's house? In San Antonio. Okay. Um, and what time frame was she going to her mother's house? Um, when we lived in Houston at the time, it was kind of maybe once a month. Um, it wasn't like every weekend or anything kind of, I had to come down to San Antonio to take my daughter to see her father. So I would bring Madison to see her mother and sometimes she would show and sometimes she wouldn't. So it's kind of hard to say it wasn't always monthly. Okay. So it was sporadic. Yes, ma'am. Um, did you have conversations with Madison about her mother? No, just sometimes she would talk about her mom. Um, do you recall that, or do you have any knowledge of um, ongoing, um, I guess, um, court filings involving her mom around that time? No. Um, uh, when Madison would talk to you about her mom, um, was it, um, well, do you recall talking to Madison about her mom the day that she told you what? Ms. No, ma'am. Okay. And um, without going into what else she has told you, have you, have you talked to Madison more about what happened? Mm -hmm. No, I have not, because when we did our interview, they stated to not kind of try to talk about it, let her do the talking on her own time. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll pass the witness. Right, Thanks. Procedure? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Keeney. My name is Leo Gonzalez. I am an attorney for Wardell Lemon. Uh, if you don't understand any questions that I have, please let me know, okay? Okay. Thank you. Now... When did you and uh, Justin Heaney, uh, I guess, be in dating? In 2013. And were you living here in San Antonio during that time? Yes. Okay. And at that time, were you where he had a daughter? Yes. And did you have a daughter at that time also? Yes. Um, how long before, I guess, your relationship? My understanding is you got married, correct? Yes. What year did you get married? 2014. 2014. Okay. In 2014, when you got married, um, at that point, where was Madison living? With her father, Justin and I. Okay. And so how often would she go and visit her mother? During that time when we lived here, every other weekend. And how would that get facilitated as far as for the pickup and drop off? Her mother would pick her up Friday at school and then drop her off Monday morning at school. Okay. So never at the house? Never. Okay. I need, um, anybody else that, that would, ever, if there was, if she was unable to pick up Madison at school, was there ever a time when somebody else dropped her off at her house or anything like that? Uh, not when we lived here in San Antonio that I'm aware of. Okay, so, and during that time, Did you uh, ever get any concerns for Madison staying with her mom? Um, yes, I did have some concerns. Did you voice those to your husband? Yes. Okay. And did he try to do anything about it? He stated that he would discuss well, it. I guess my question is to you, did he do anything about it? He would talk to her mother. Okay. And are you aware that they had conversations about things? Yes. Okay. Did he ever seek an attorney to your knowledge to figure out if there's anything else he could do? To my knowledge, no. Okay. And did you know that she was dating Wardell Lemon? Amanda was? Yes. Okay. Um, Madison being your stepdaughter, she'd come back from these visits. How, what was her demeanor when she came back? Um, sometimes she was just a normal kid, and then sometimes she was very emotional. 
And kids tend to be that way, right? They do. Were there times it was hard for her to leave her mom's? I don't think there was ever she struggled with that. But there were times? No, I don't think she struggled with that. At all? At all. Okay. Um, whenever she had to go to her mom's, did she ever have any trouble going? No. Did y'all um, like follow each other on, on uh, social media? And like, did you know what was going on whenever she'd stay with um, Amanda? No. Do you know if your husband had any social media presence that followed either one of them? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, did she ever talk about Wardell? I'm talking about Madison. No, not really. At all? She would mention that her mom and Wardell would go to a bowling alley when she'd be with them, you know, anything along those lines. But so, not... so she would talk about things that they may have done. Yes. Okay. Um, you said you were not aware of any kind of um, court filings that were filed during this time? No. So you were not aware that your husband had filed to modify child support? I don't believe he filed to modify. I believe from her mother not paying. May I approach witness, John? Yes. I'm going to show you some Marcus State's, I'm sorry, Defense Exhibits number two. Do you recognize that? This is a court document. Okay, so is this the first time you've seen that document? Yes. So uh, can you, it's been entered into evidence already. What does it say on there? It looks like it's a, a motion for enforcement. And? And suit for modification of child support order. Okay, so... During this time it was filed, did you have conversations with your husband about that? About it being filed? Yes. He came to court because of her mother not paying. That's I'm gonna object to non-responsive, Your Honor. Sustained. I just listened to the question and answer the question that's being asked. My question to you is, did you have conversations with your husband about filing these documents? We did not have conversations other than him going to court. So when did you find out he had filed it? When he went to his court date. So this issue of enforcement and modification was something that was a surprise to you? No, because her mother would never pay. So you knew that this was ongoing then? No, what I'm saying is I'm not surprised that it got modified. No, my, that's not my question. My question to you is where you, you just said you didn't know that it had been filed that you only found out when he went to court. Yes. So at that point, it was a surprise to you that he had even filed the documents. Yes, that it was going to modification, yes, to that phase. So he was doing something without you knowing what was going on with that whole situation. I, if you want to interpret it that way, then. I object to non-responsive once again. Sustained. My question is yes or no. Did you, were you surprised? Were you not aware that he was, he had filed these motions? Yes. You were not aware? I was not aware other than the court. That's not, my question is, were you not aware? I said yes. Okay. Now, the day that this outcry that you've talked about here today occurred, what were y'all doing that day? Like I said, going to Target. And who was going to Target? Myself, Madison, and my daughter. And when you talk about your daughter, you're talking about Addison. Yes. So you don't refer to Madison as your daughter. Madison is my daughter, but we're here talking. My daughter, I wasn't aware that I needed to state her name. So... 
how did it, what was the conversation like in the car? You kind of said it was girl talk, but what, how did it progress from girl talk to an outcry? Like I said, my daughter and Madison were talking about liking boys, just conversation about school. And my daughter had mentioned a boy's eyes were blue and she loved the way they sparkled and he had freckles and she would connect his freckles. It was just little innocent girl talk. And so then how did what my question was, how did it get to the outcry? Because Madison mentioned about when she when it comes time to her dating and her dad being a little strict and wanting a certain thing. And then she I said, your dad just wants you to date someone good from a good family, a good background. And she that's when she stated someone not like my mommy's boyfriend. He's creepy. So did you ask her any questions about that afterwards? No, like I said previously, I. We're just surprised. Well, let me backtrack. So did you ever have a conversation with Madison about people doing things you're not supposed to do, uh, like touching you or anything inappropriate that might bother you and about having a conversation with her about that? I never had conversation, but she's a little girl like my little girl. And I let them be aware. Don't ever. Let anyone touch you, whether it's on your arm, your hair, wherever you don't feel comfortable. So you did talk to him about it? Not in regards to Wardell, in regards to just a situation in general. Okay, so that's funny you mentioned that. So if you're saying that you never had a conversation with Madison about whether or not Wardell did anything to her? What I'm you the question you just asked. I'm objecting on responsive once again, Your Honor. Sustained. My question to you is, did you ever have a conversation with Madison about, and where you asked her the question, if Wardell ever did anything to her? I have never asked her. Okay. Now, the day that this outcry occurred, you said you called the police? Yes, my husband did. Okay. And then uh, what happened after you called the police? We waited for a police officer to show up at our home. Okay. And once they showed up at your home, what happened at that point? That's when the officer talked to myself. Um, he briefly had to see Madison. And then he, of course, my husband was crying and he was consoling him. Now, um, you talked to the officer about what Madison had told you? Yes. Okay. Do you recall telling the officer? that Wardell, this happened to her, that he would go into her bedroom and begin rubbing her stomach? I did not state that. You don't recall saying that? I did not state that. Okay, what did you state then? Exactly what I said previously, that we were in the car on our way to Target, girl talk, they were making little remarks about boys. And then she eventually stated that he was creepy and she wanted to tell me something. Did you uh, ever rec recall telling the officer that um, she said that Lemon would pull her pants down and then stimulate her sexual organs? No. Did you ever tell the officer that uh, he wasn't sure if intercourse or penetration occurred? I never stated any of that. And you never told the officer that she never responded yes as to whether or not this occurred, but she just started crying? And yes, that's I, exactly what I told you previously. I told the officer. Okay, so she never gave a complete answer as to whether or not intercourse or penetration occurred? I she never just, asked her that. You didn't? Okay, so how do you think it ended up on the officer's report? I do not know. That's speculation. Sustained. So let me ask you this. Um, are you saying that anything that was collected as part of an investigation written down by from in an officer's report um, that might be contradictory to yours is because of the officer or because of you? I'm going to say the officer. And you would agree with me that an officer can't take down correctly what has been told to you, that calls into question their investigation? Objective speculation, sustained. Well, in your, in your 
in your belief, if you were told that somebody had gotten down wrong, what you had said, would that concern you? Yes. And you would also agree with me that if there was inconsistencies, that would hurt how truthful these statements were that you said that Madison told you? Object to the speculation, vague. That'd be overruled. Did you agree with me that that would affect whether or not people were able to believe those statements if there were some kind of inconsistencies between what you told the officer and what you're testified here today? Object, she's not an expert as to inconsistencies engaging a case. Sustained. If there was a difference between your story now and then, that would be a concern, right? Yes. After this, uh, discussion with the officer, what happened then as far as for the investigation? Uh, we waited for, I can't remember who first contacted us and told us that someone would be in contact um, for us to have the interview. And did you in fact have that interview? Yes. Were you there at that interview? Yes. And like, were you present during the interview or just there at the location? I was just there at the facility. They did it with her and a professional. I'm not really sure their name. Did your husband ever talk to you about Wardell? No. Did he ever tell you he didn't like Wardell? No. Did it, would it surprise you if he didn't like Wardell? Would it surprise me? Yes. Um, no, especially knowing what we know now. Prior to the allegations coming out, would that have surprised you? Yes. Also, um, was there ever a time that you or your mother or your husband's mother dropped off Madison at uh, Amanda's house? Object to lack of personal knowledge about what other people did. I'm asking if she's aware. You can answer. Was, can you repeat? Yeah, I'll repeat the, the question. Um, was there ever a time that you yourself dropped off Amanda at, I'm sorry, at Madison at Amanda's house? Yes, when we lived in Houston. Were there times where you dropped her off and Justin didn't know? Never. Were there times that your mother or your husband's mother dropped her off at that you're aware of at Amanda's house? No. Um, you said during the time that you were in Houston, there was a couple of times you dropped her off at Amanda's house. There was, I believe, once or maybe twice. Pass the sure. Great. You said on cross that at times Madison would be emotional when she returned home from her mom's house. Can you, um, I guess, explain what you mean by emotional? Sometimes the day that she got home or the next day, she would just cry. And I'd kind of ask her, are you okay? What's going on? Do you need to talk? And she just wouldn't talk. Was her mom a sensitive subject? Yes. <clears throat> so did her being emotional cause you to suspect anything? As far as 
with her mother or as far as uh, did you attribute her being emotional to the fact that you know, she missed her mom or was or were there yes. other reasons that you- I would kind of just assume you know she's a small child she she misses her mother naturally what any child wants is their mom or dad okay um Did you um, bring Madison to court today? Yes, with my husband. Um, did she seem, did she want to testify? She was Jack just, John, relevance. Sustained. No further questions, John. Just briefly, Your Honor. Um, does Madison have any social media accounts? Yes. What does she have? Instagram. Anything else? Object to relevant. Overrule. Anything else? No. Okay. Are you aware that? Um, her mother's tried to reach out to her on different social media to make contact? No, I'm not aware. Okay. Are you aware that um, she's been blocked on those social media accounts? I am not aware. So are you aware of what's on Madison's social media accounts? Yes. Okay. You're aware of all the social media accounts that she has? To my knowledge, it's only Instagram. But does she have more than one account on Instagram? From my knowledge, no. You said you're, there was times where you drop off your daughter and Madison at, I guess, your daughter at her father's and Madison at her mother's when you came to San Antonio? Yes, I would either meet her at a location. So during the time you were doing this custody drop-off, you were also participating in your own? Yes. Okay. Um, And so whenever that would occur, would you go back home and then your daughter would be brought back to you? No, I would stay in town. Okay. So you would stay in town um, and then your daughter would be brought to you wherever you were at? Yes. I would pick my daughter up and then we'd meet. And you'd also pick up Madison? Yes, I'd meet for Madison. Your daughter ever have any issues when she left and came home? As far as Uh, we're emotional? No. Never? No. So just Madison? Yes. The conversation you had with the police officer um, that day that the outcry took place, how long conversation was that? Uh, Maybe... 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Was that the actual conversation or 30 minutes or an hour that they were there? The actual conversation. So what else did you talk about in the 30 minutes or an hour that you had this conversation? I mean, you've talked to us about what the outcry was that day and it didn't take 30 minutes or an hour. What what else did y'all discuss? There was nothing else discussed. It was the first time hearing it. So it's very hard to say it. So you would agree with me that there may have been some things you said that were different than the the now? Not at all? Not at all. Not. So four years ago, it's exactly the same? It's exactly the same. Nothing further. Any further questions? Um, Just briefly, uh, you mentioned that you took Madison to get an interview. Yes. You also take her somewhere to get examined. They did it all in one facility. Okay. Were you present with Madison when she was examined? They told me I could not. Okay. Um, so you weren't present at all for the exam? No, they wouldn't allow me. Okay. All right. No further questions. Just one question, Your Honor. Um, you weren't aware of what year this allegedly took place? No. Nothing further on. Nothing further. All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? 
Excuse your honor. Excuse me. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. Yes, ma'am. All right. And if possible, if you'll pass that exhibit to the court reporter, okay. please. Thank you. State call your next witness. Uh, state calls Detective O'Brien. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. All right, just have a seat. Make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear and the jurors can hear. If you could state your name for the record and spell it, please. Uh, my name is Alicia, A L I C I A O'Brien, O B R I E N. All right, state. Thank you, Ryan. Um, good afternoon, Detective. Um, if I can start out, wh where are you currently employed? Um, I'm currently a sergeant with the San Antonio Police Department. And how long have you been employed by the San Antonio Police Department? 11 years. And um, prior to your employment, did you attend the police academy? Yes. And did you take written and practical exams at the academy? Yes. Did you pass those exams? Yes. And um, in 2019, um, what unit were you assigned to? I was assigned to the Special Victims Unit, primarily on the sex crime side of the division. Um, and <clears throat> how long total were you with that division? Four years. And were you involved in an investigation um, involving the, the, the defendant, Wardell Lemon? Yes. And um, were, was SAPD the uh, initiating uh, agency in this investigation? We were not. Who was? Uh, Harris County. And when did you become involved in the investigation? Uh, so it, I guess I'll just kind of walk you through it. So the report was taken in Harris County uh, because it happened in San Antonio. Um, as a courtesy, agencies will take the preliminary report, uh, basically get all the, the who, wit, who, what, when, and why, and then they will send that report to the jurisdiction that the offense occurred in, which in this case was San Antonio. Um, so that gets sent to the special victims unit um, because that is a Harris County report number that gets transferred to an SAPD report number and then ultimately assigned a detective for follow up. And um, so before you received the case, what had already been done in the investigation? Uh, I believe just the preliminary report. Um, so once you and SAPD received the, <clears throat> the case, what was your first step in your investigation? Uh, the first step in this investigation was to reach out to um, the victim's family because the victim was a minor when I got the case. Uh, she was 12. Uh, I reached out to um, stepmom, who is the one that initiated the report, and she was the outcry witness. Uh, and ultimately, I figured she was a safe person that uh, the victim felt comfortable talking to originally. Uh, so I talked to her and um, the purpose was to coordinate a time for uh, the victim to be forensically interviewed in Harris County. Okay. And um, did you uh, eventually set up that, that interview with the victim yes. and her family? Okay. And were you present when the forensic interview was conducted? I was not. It was conducted in Harris County. Okay. Um, so um, did you uh, review any materials from the forensic interview? Yes. What did you review? Uh, so after the forensic interview is conducted, um, they pretty much burn a DVD and they send it to me, uh, and then I have a chance to view it. Uh, so with this, um, do you want me to go into what was on it? Um, I guess what was what was recorded without going into any statements. I mean, what was re what was on that disc? Okay, so let me explain the forensic interview because I don't think many people are what's involved. Uh, so the forensic interview is conducted purposefully by someone that is non-law enforcement. They have the minimum required of a master's degree, uh, and their job is primarily to elicit information from children in a non-leading way. Um, they create a safe environment uh, where it's one-on-one -on -one in a nice, comfortable room, uh, so the child feels safe and not cornered or uh, doesn't feel like an interrogation. 
Um, so when I viewed um, the forensic interview, she talks about this time. At the time she's being interviewed, she's 12. She talks about a time between the ages, I believe, I from Jack, six to nine. Saying. Sustained. <clears throat> um, so with without going into the, the the details of the actual forensic interview um when you're reviewing a forensic interview what are you looking for um in order to justify further investigation into any kind of allegation yeah so i'm looking for um his consistency i'm looking for her to be able to describe in detail things that have occurred uh her forensic interview, she was very detailed. Um, I'm also watching her emotional response to things um, that would be age appropriate for a 12 year old, the words she used in her interview. Um, all of those things uh, are consistent in, in her forensic interview. Okay. And um, in these- I'm more about picking out more details because originally the reports are kind of vague purposefully because uh, we don't want victims to be re-traumatized and have to tell the story over and over and over. So for the most part, we try to get all of that done in the forensic interview. Okay. And um, in these forensic interviews, do you also look for um, indicators of grooming? Yes. And uh, what is grooming? So grooming, I think the best way I can describe it is, is kind of when people test the water. So you might have an adult figure, um, starting with something minor with a child, it might be tickling, it might be telling them like, this is okay, like reinforcing, like this is a normal thing to do. Um, and then if the kid is okay with that, they start taking it to the next step. It might be touching a different part that might be more close to a breast or a genital, or, um, and then kind of seeing how far they can go before there's a response from the kid. It's primarily to make the kid more comfortable with everything they keep doing over and over and over. Okay. And in this case, did you see any um, indications of grooming or any clues of grooming? I did. What were those? Yeah, with um, this victim started talking about um, initially having the suspects. Uh, object on her to hearsay. Sustained. Um, Um, well, when you reviewed the um, forensic interviews, what um, was uh, any statements made in the forensic interview consistent with anything that was included in prior reports? Are you talking about the original report from Harris County? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Um, were there any other statements from the victim that you were able to compare that with? Yes, she, after the forensic interview, she was sent to um, get a medical examination conducted. Um, I can't, I don't know what it's called in Harris County, but uh, the place here would be Center, Center for Miracles, um, where they talk about um, any kind of trauma that has been afflicted upon them, whether it's physical or sexual, and they provide further resources moving forward. But they also provide a statement of what happened. And were the statements made at that time consistent with statements that the victim made previously? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, so after the um, forensic interview was conducted, what was the next step you took? In your investigation the next step after that is i tried to contact uh the victim's biological mother um the, the biological mother was it was it was it happened in her household and she was in a relationship with the suspect uh, so i made multiple attempts to contact her uh, but she never returned any of my phone calls why did you try to get in contact with her um, I want to talk to her about, well, I mean, like, like I said, she lived there. Mm -hmm. She was in a relationship. I wanted to see what, how much she knew about it. Um, I also wanted to, um, to talk to about, obviously, if she's witnessed any of it, that's a possibility as well. Um, and anything further that she could provide me on uh, the suspect. Okay. 
And did you try to get in touch with anybody else during your investigation? Your Honor, can we yes. approach? Yes. I'm going to give you all a 10 minute break, but remember my previous instructions. All right. All right, everyone, please rise to the bureaus. Oh, oh no, the, the AC is out. They say that there are some parts at first it was a compressor. Why do they say that? The parts that are needed have been outsourced. Oh, so that runs. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Only MacGyver were here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, please be seated. <laughs> All right. So, defense and state. Of course, the court is hearing this information the first time, the way everyone else is hearing it. So if you will ask your question, please, that way I can hear uh, the defense's objections. Yes, so if you could ask your previous question. Uh, Detective, did you attempt to uh, contact anybody else during, during your investigation? Yes, I attempted to contact this suspect. Okay. And um, did, you, uh, did you successfully make contact with the defendant? Yes, um, we scheduled an appointment for him to come to police headquarters um, to sit down and talk to me about this incident. And um, did he um, show up for, did, did he show up to speak with you? No, the day of he called um, as a courtesy to say that he was not interested in coming. All right. And do you have any questions that you would like to make? Just, argument? just briefly, Your Honor. Yes. Did he give you a reason as to why he canceled the appointment, Detective? He said he wanted to consult an attorney. Okay. And so um, and based upon that, that was what you understood as to why he didn't come in for the interview? Yeah. Okay. And so, Your Honor, that would just be that our concern is that that information gets to his right to invoke counsel, and we don't want that to be negatively construed by the jury. So is the defense is your, do you have any objections to the question that the state has asked? My only objection would be that uh, regarding, I think it should be a little more tailored as to whether or not they had contact with him. They did, but nothing came of that, I think would be, so that way it doesn't get to, he has to say he wanted to have an attorney present with him. All right, so do you have any objection to the witness testifying that your client did not show for the appointment? Um, I believe that that would be, that's a little vague, Your Honor, just that they did not have any that they I never had a conversation, I think is because I don't want it to seem like he just didn't show, but there was a reason why he didn't show, which then leads to other. Well, isn't that solved by saying uh, whether or not he gave you a reason for not appearing? And then that's either yes or no. I, I feel like that leaves a, a, for the jury as to what that reason is. <laughs> and then it has to be that he, well, I don't think it's objectionable for the state to ask them to ask this witness if she, I'm sorry, if she asked or if she made contact with any other people. And the answer would be, as she stated, she made contact with your client and that they talked on the phone or however they communicated. Then what did, you know, what was the conversation about i think she can testify that they made an appointment for him to come in so 
up until that point, do you see anything objectionable? Up until that point, no, Your Honor. All right. Then the next question is going to be, did he come in? And that's either yes or no. And I think that's, I think if we limit the answer to, no, he did not come in, that's sufficient at that point. All right. Okay. So, so I'm saying he scheduled an appointment and then when they asked me if he came in, no. Did he ultimately come in big, and big, give a yeah. statement? No. Okay. All right. So defense, are you uh, satisfied with that as being the answer? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So then uh, you're not allowed to go into the fact that Mr. Lemon called you and said, I want to consult an at attorney before I come in. You're just allowed to answer those specific questions. And then did he uh, show up for the appointment? That's either yes or no. There's no explanation to that. Okay. All right. Does anyone need a brief break? Now's the time to take it. I'm good. I'll take it real quick. All right. <laughs> All right.
And you know what they say? Uh, she can just cut the dead roots. So the test is going to be when we read. So oh, well, you can do one or two things. One, if you clip it. You can flip it, and if you put it in water, it'll grow. Mm -hmm. And just put it in some water. Yeah. But look at the one that's in my window. You'll see it's growing its own roots. All right, we're ready. All right, to the jury. All right, everyone, please be seated. It stated it's your witness. Uh, Sergeant, um, did you uh, attempt to get in touch with anybody else during your investigation? Yes, I attempted to contact the suspect. And um, what purpose were you trying to contact uh, the defendant for? Uh, to offer him an opportunity to give me his side of the story. Okay. And um, did you? Uh, Schedule uh, an interview with the defendant? We did. And um, so you made successful contact with him? Yes, we spoke on the phone. Okay. And um, was that interview ever conducted? No. Um, no. Nothing further, Your Honor. Defense? Can I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. Um, Sergeant, Sergeant now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, I want to make sure that you get your correct title. I know you've earned it, so I want to make sure they call you the right thing. Um, regarding your investigation, um, typically when you have an uh, out-of-county uh, or out-of-the-city um, investigation, what's the process that you go through? So depending on um, who's where, in this uh, particular case, the victim was um, out of the city. Um, so I have to rely on other um, other agencies resources to help. And so once when whereabouts, I guess, I guess, when did you actually get notice that this was a case that was assigned to you? Do you recall? The date? I, I mean, yeah. I know it was 2019. Uh, I couldn't tell you what month. Now, in any case that you have, do you prepare a report or a um, some kind of um, um, something to help refresh your memory later on if you need to? Yes. And um, what is that typically called? A prosecution guide. Okay. May I approach witness, Your Honor? Yes. I'm going to hand to you with the mark. There's a state's exhibit number five. I'm sorry, defense exhibit. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and what defense exhibit number is it? Five. I'm sorry, three. I don't know why it's five. <laughs> Confusing. Yeah, this is my prosecution guide. Okay. And um, you recognize it to be the one that you prepared as part of the investigation in this case? Yes. And whenever you do that, uh, you go through, and you've talked about it here, you go through the statements that you've already received to determine if there's any consistencies or inconsistencies. Correct. Okay. Um, in regards to... Did you ever determine where, what the location was that this allegedly took place? Uh, the address was the address that he was, um, I believe that they were still living at. Uh, our dash. Okay. And within that address, was there a location where it supposedly took place? Like within the household? Yes. Um, Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay. It's not offered for the two. Uh, defense that's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted your honor so i don't believe it's hearsay all right that'll be sustained did you make a determination as to 
with any where it was within the house that this took place. And that's just yet. Yeah, did you make that determination? Let me let me refresh uh, my memory okay. here. I know the report from Harris County talks about it being objection. Your Honor, hearsay as to what the report from Harris County says. All right, that will be sustained as to what the the report says. Um, you yourself, did you make a determination based upon what you had observed and read? as to where it had taken place? No. You did not? No, okay. I don't think so. And um, <clears throat> I guess whenever you receive that initial report and the forensic interview, do you, do you watch those one right after another? Like you watch the, you read the statement, then you watch the video, and then you make a determination of what you should do with your case? Yeah, it's a little bit more than that. So okay. well, tell me a little bit what you do. So I'll get the preliminary report. Um, like I said, it's it's usually not very descriptive um, by design. We don't want to talk to children about very specific details out in the field. Um, so I kind of get the idea of uh, the victim, her age, um, and and what specifically she's saying happened. Uh, so then I watch the forensic interview. Um, of course, I'm going to compare what was said originally to that. Um, for consistency. And so I guess in order to do that, you kind of have to read them and watch them pretty close to each other so you don't miss something. Sure. Okay. Um, and you stated that there was consistencies between what she told the officers originally and the child safe or the forensic interview? Yeah, I'm talking about what happened to her. Okay. I think you're talking about where it happened. Um, I, I don't recall that, but when I, when she talks about what specifically happened to her body, she's very consistent and she's very detailed. Okay, so regarding an act taking place, she was consistent about the act taking place. Correct. Okay, now you would agree with me that sometimes these other details will help others make a determination as to whether or not somebody's credible in what they're saying. Objection, speculation. <clears throat> Overall. How long have you been, uh, well, a detective formally in, in the working these kind of cases? Four years. Okay. And so you've handled quite a few of them? Yes. And so you've stated that you're looking for consistencies to help you determine if somebody's credible. Part of it. Part of it, I mean, I mean, trauma plays a big role of how things are presented from the victim. Uh, there's a lot of variables and little little pieces can be out of order. Um, very common with trauma. I mean, they're reliving the worst day of their life. So you're looking for consistencies, also some inconsistencies that maybe have an explanation. Sure. Okay. Um, but you're looking to compare the statements, correct? To see if there's anything that you maybe a red flag. Hey, this could be a problem. Correct. Yeah, I mean, if it's completely opposite of what she says happened, then yeah, I've got a problem with that. And if somebody were to say a location was different from where from where it took place in one statement and another, that wouldn't be a red flag to you? Not when it involves a six to nine-year-old. Okay, so in that regards, a six to nine-year-old, everyone that gives a statement, no matter how inconsistent it might be, you believe that to be credible? Objection, but you're talking right? about specifics of time and place and a six and nine-year-old. Excuse me. When one of the attorneys makes an objection, yeah, I know people are whispering, but when one attorney makes an objection, just stop speaking That's so right. I can make a ruling. All right. Is there an objection? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. All right. That'll be overruled. You can go ahead and answer. Uh, now I forgot what your question That's okay. was. okay. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so. In regards to your experience, uh, you said six and nine year olds, that is not an issue for you, inconsistencies. Is that correct? Yeah. And what I was talking about is when it talks about time and place, uh, it's very common for these kids to not know how old they were or what month it was or what grade they were in, especially if it's something that has happened multiple times. Um, they also might not know where they were living at the time, if they change houses, if they stay with dad sometimes, if they stay with mom sometimes very common for six to nine-year-olds. 
So then would it be correct to say then with somebody in that age group, age range, they make an outcry, you're pretty much going to forward over to the DA's office and let them figure it out? If they're consistent, yeah. And even based upon what your last statement was, if they're somewhat inconsistent because of that age range, Again, there's an explanation. Consistent about the experience of what happened to them. Little things about time and place. Uh, again, it's very common with trauma to not be able to recollect that uh, in perfect chronological order. But if there's details missing or changed in different statements, that could be an issue, right? Like what? Uh, I mean, any number of things. It happened in a house or it happened uh, in another house. It happened in a room or it, where the person came to me or I went to the person. Those are two different things. Right. She also said it happened my, I guess, my multiple question, times. My question, before better, you go for it. All the places. My question to you, though, is whether or not that would be a concern for you. No. Okay. And because of the age range, you feel like that's something that can be explained? Yes. Okay. So typically when cases, and normally within the San Antonio Police Department, somebody within that age range comes and makes an outcry, whether they're completely consistent or not, you're going to go forward on the case. Yeah, I mean, she has no nothing to gain to come forward on this and actually more to lose by coming forward. Were you aware that there was a child support um, filings made prior to this allegation coming out? Child support? No, it was not. Okay. I have no further questions, John. Any other questions? Uh, nothing based on that, Your Honor. All right. Is this witness excused or subject for recall? Excuse from the state. Excuse, Your Honor. All right. The rule has been invoked. You're not allowed to discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. And if you'll leave the exhibit with the court reporter, please. All right. State, call your next witness. Your Honor, at this time, the state rests. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know we have been breaking a lot. Uh, but I'm going to have you all line up outside at 3 p.m. There are a couple of matters that I need to take up. All right. So you've heard what I've said. Remember my instructions. No thinking about it. No discussing it with each other. No investigation. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right. Please stand. Oh, everyone, please be seated.
There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, for the jury. The defense called Amanda Lewis. All right, you've previously been sworn in. If you'll state your name for the record, spell it, keep your voice up so that the members of the jury and the court reporter can hear. Amanda Lewis, A M A N D A L E W I S. All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Lewis, um, how do you know Wardell Lemon? Um, that's my boyfriend. And how long have you and Mr. Lemon dated? For about 13, 14 years. Miss Lewis, do you have any children? Uh, I have Madison and I have three other children. How old are they? Uh, Madison's 16. My oldest is 23. I have a 22 and I also have like a 17 year old. Okay. Do you have any children with Wardell? No. Mm -hmm. And who is Madison's father? Justin Keeney. Were you and Mr. Keeney ever married? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you and Mr. Keeney ever live together? Yes, we did. Do you remember how what years those were? Um, from the time Madison was born until about 2005 or six, or I don't know the years exactly, no, um, but a good three or four years. Okay. Do you recall what year uh, Madison was born? 2004. Thanks. <laughs> you not recall? Um, with four kids, no. Okay. <laughs> June 18, 2007. No, I do not know the year right offhand. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Um, how were things between you and Justin? Uh, um, while while you were living together with um Amanda, I'm sorry with uh with Madison. I think I'm trying to get to, um, to relevance. Overall, how were things to get at the house between you and Madison and Justin? Um, they were fine in the beginning. Um, Justin worked at a hotel. You know, we were young. It we fought a lot. Uh, you know, he would want to go out and drink him while I had a baby at home. Things like that. <laughs> At, at, at a certain point, did you all no longer continue to date? Yes, that's correct. And what happened after that relationship ended? Um, you know, he went um, for child support and then I was put on that and that made like when I wasn't paying child support or something, it just turned ugly. So I'm going to stop you right there. Um, at that point, do you recall what year this was? 2008, nine, I don't know. Okay. Now you'd agree with me based upon what you remember. You're not very good with years. I am not, no. Okay. And um, in that regard, um, when did you and uh, Wardell begin dating? Oh, geez. Um, I guess how long after the relationship ended with Justin? Um, I was currently kind of still with Justin as me and Wardell were talking um, when I broke up with Justin and was kicked out of the house with a baby. I went to stay with Wardell or to proceed that. And so you then began living with Wardell. That's correct. Okay. And at that point, when you're living with Wardell, did you have Madison with you for some time? Yeah, I did. Every other weekend I had her on a custody order. Okay. Um, So during the time she wasn't with you every other weekend, she was with her dad? That's correct. Whenever she would come and stay with you on the weekend, would you see her? Yeah. Okay. I would um, have to take off work to stay with Madison. Now, when you talk about work, where, where were you working at that time? I work at Frollo's Pizza um, out by the Dominion. How long have you worked there? I've worked there for 10 years. 
And so during the time when she was visiting you, how would you coordinate it so you either um, were at work or not at work when she came by? Correct. Um, it was she was not allowed to come unless I was there. Um, so I would talk to my boss and tell her that I would need off every other weekend because Madison would be coming. Um, and that Friday, usually I would work in the morning or we'd go pick her up from school. Wardell and I would pick her up from school or they would drop her off to us. Whenever she would come stay with y'all, what kind of things would you do? Um, we really liked bowling. Um, we would go to university bowl probably every weekend, if not every other weekend. Um, we would do friends barbecues for the Spurs game. Um, we would hang out with uh, Shauna, my friend Shauna from Frollo's, who has a daughter, Madison. Uh, we would just, you know, do things at home. Cook, bake, um, just, you know, hang out with your daughter. What kind of, what, what was your relationship like with Madison? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, were y'all close? Yeah, very close. And what was her relationship like with Wardell? I would say they were very close as well. What did you observe about how they got along with each other? Madison looked up to him like a dad. What gave you that impression? Other than her saying it? Mm -hmm. Um, just the way she, I mean, she was always happy. She would always be like me, she would call him buddy. So she would say, you know, or me and you and buddy going to go bowling or me and you and buddy this, or can my buddy take me here? Or, can buddy do this? Or, you know, me and buddy are going to play basketball outside or. Why would you call him buddy? Um, well, <laughs> when she was little and Justin, um, didn't know Wardell, like he didn't want her around Wardell. So uh, she would call him buddy. So Justin wouldn't find out until eventually, you know, he figured that out. Um, but I don't know, probably because that's her buddy. They spent a lot of time hanging out together. Who, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, Wardell and, and uh, Madison. Yes, yes. And I. Okay. Um, you trusted Wardell to be around your daughter. Definitely 100%. And did they ever play video games together that you recall? Oh, yeah. Yep. Was that a normal thing? It was. Yeah, we're big video people, um, video game people. So, yeah, she would like to play Forza. That would be a thing because she could drive. Um, I think we had a Wii at, maybe at the time that she would also play. Um, I would say, yeah. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. was marked as states exhibits four through nine. Council, those states exhibits, sir. Defense exhibits, I'm sorry. That's okay. Defense exhibits four through nine. Can you, um, you recognize those? Yes, I do. And what are they? There are pictures of when Madison was at the house, or this is at my job. Um, this is at University Bowl. And this is the Madisons at outside, plus my Madison playing with Wardell. Are those true and accurate uh, copies of photographs that were taken? Mm, yes, sir. Or did they appear to have been altered in any way? No, sir. Okay, and what states exhibit? I'm sorry, defense exhibit number nine. Six, eight, seven. Where's nine? To, okay. Um, it's a folder that they used to draw in, or Madison has all of her drawings that Wardell likes to draw. So Madison picked that up and she also liked to. Do. So, is that something they shared together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, would they both draw on that book? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know that this one's Wardell's, but I mean, yeah, she would. This is her drawing with Buddy. Yes. Okay. And that's that's the actual one that they drove the she drew in. Yes, mm -hmm. this is from the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, offering of it to state exhibits four through nine, and I'll tender to council. Okay, you might want to say that's a face swap. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs>
Any objection? Um, a lot here. <laughs> Uh, no objection to um, the fence exhibits four through eight. Um, you'll give me a minute to look. Nine is a big binder. All right, then states exhibits, I'm sorry, defense exhibits four, five, six, seven, and eight are admitted without objection. May I publish the jury at this time? Now? Yes. Um, Your Honor, may I take the witness on a brief board hour? Uh, yes. Okay, Ms. Lewis, um, or I'm sorry, Defense Exhibit 9 is this big binder. Um, whose binder was this? Madison's. Okay. Sure, it was ours. It was around the house. She picked it up, asked to draw on it, of course. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Whose handwriting is this in the front? That would be Wardell's. That's Wardell's. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't even. I don't know. What that is, other than that. okay. Excuse me. Just wait till the question is asked of yes. you. Yes. Whose footprint is this? Madison's. Okay. Did you see her make this? I'm sure I did. So did I? It, your opinion that Madison made all of these? Madison did make all those. I believe that's it. What about that? We're done. And who are whose phone numbers are these? Um, I think those are for me. Um, some I don't know. Those are phone numbers okay. we know. That looks like Widow's mom's dad's number, sister. <laughs> Your Honor, I, I would just object to. There's multiple items within what's marked as Defense Exhibit 9. Um, some of them, you know, the ones that are purportedly from the defendant, I would object to lack of authentication um, relevant. Um, otherwise, I don't have objections to Madison's drawings, um, but I, I think they need to be labeled. All right, Defense. Your Honor, um, it's been testified to that these are some as a, a activity that they did together. Um, so there would be uh, things from, from Wardell as well as from Madison. So I believe it's in context to give both of those. I will label this separately um, just to make sure that it's clear Can on I the see record. defense exhibit number nine, please. Yes, your honor. And I will label the one of the items that's an inlet as just defense exhibit number 10. Right, and with regards to the part of defense exhibit number nine that has the defendant's parents' phone number in it. Can I ask the group that, Your Honor? That, really... All right, any objections to number 10? Um, Your Honor, I, I, only if, may I approach, Your Honor? Mm 
Any objection to number 10? We're going to clarify a couple of things on the retainer on the two point. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, the fancy, what's marked is now is the fancy exhibit. Fan, do you recognize this? Um, yes. Um, that's a buddy. This is for you. Dad, I love you so much. That's Madison's note to Cordell. And this is all of it together is what, do you know? Um, it's a card. This is something she made for Wardell. Okay. This is a card that she made for Wardell. It's supposed to open like this. And that's the message. This is just the front of the card. I gotcha. Okay. And so this is the actual one that she made? Yeah. And it hasn't been altered in any way no. to your knowledge? No. Okay. Once again, an offer and evidence. State, I'm sorry, defense exhibit 10. All right. State, I'll hear your objection to 10. Your Honor, I object to authentication. We don't know when it was made, where it was made, under what circumstances it, it may have been made by Madison and she observed her personally making it. All right. State's uh, defense exhibit number 10 is admitted over objection. And if I could have parties approach with regards to defense exhibit number nine. May I publish number 10, Your Honor? Yes. So Madison and Wardell had a lot of activities that they worked on together. Yes, that's correct, all three of us. Okay. And now a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. You don't have the same relationship with your daughter that you used to. That's correct. At one point, did that relationship change? As soon as I got behind on child support payments. When, when did that occur? Um, in the winter time when um, the restaurant was slow and I wasn't making full payments, Justin wasn't getting his money. Um, in the beginning, I paid him directly versus paying it through the state. So the only way to pick up Madison was to make sure I paid that 350 or $155 every two weeks. It was paid to his mom before I picked her up. So would you, would mom, his mom be there at the location? Um, to drop off the money, not necessarily because we pick her up from school. We would then go in their neighborhood. I would go through their front door and leave money on either underneath their rug or inside their home. During this time, you and Wardell living together, um, you're bringing income working as a, wait, as a wait, waitress. Mm -hmm. What kind of income was Wardell bringing in? Um, that's where he had t-shirts um, with his cousin, Vaughn. They have a printing t-shirt business. And we also made uh, shirts for my job as well. Was that a regular thing? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Is it still a regular thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, despite not seeing your daughter for the reasons you've discussed, why have you not had any contact with your daughter in the last few years? Well, even times that I make contact, it's either I'm blocked, uh, they don't respond. Just there's even with a court order, there's no re response. So, have you had to get a court order in order to have contact with her? 
I'm sure I could, but I have not. No, I'm saying like the court order from like visitation rights and stuff like that because he's not holding up his end of visitation. So therefore I wasn't able to see her at any time. Just when Justin decided for me to see her is when I could see her. When they moved to Houston, how often did you see Madison? Barely ever. What, why weren't you able to see her or why didn't you see her more? Because they would never come to town and I would have to go to Houston to see her or they would be out of town or not responding to any of my texts. In regards to the orders that were in place, when he moved her to Houston, did that concern you? Well, yeah, because then I definitely wasn't about to see her because it's even further away. Some may ask, why didn't you fight harder to try to keep her within Bear County? Because that's my daughter. Of course, I want to see her. I mean. Well, why did you think that there wasn't more of a fight for you in order to keep her here so she wouldn't be moved to Houston? Well, I mean, I looked into that. That was more money. Like, I mean, I have. I couldn't get a lawyer to help me. And he has a lawyer through his parents or himself. Were you aware that he married and had um, other children? Oh, yeah. Um, did you ever meet his um, his new wife or, I guess, yeah. Madison's stepmother? Yes. Uh, on few or? Um, a few times. Uh, she texts. She's also dropped Madison off at the house um, without Justin knowing he was out of town. Before you go any further, how did you know that she knew he didn't know? She told me. Okay. And two, why would that be necessary? because Justin didn't want me to see her. And the only way for Madison to see me would either be from Justin's mom, because Justin's mom would either drop her off or I would be able to go see her, meet them at Whataburger, meet them anywhere for an hour or two to see them while Justin was out of town because she would want me to have contact with my daughter. Are you aware they moved back to the San Antonio area? I am aware. Have you tried to reach out and visit or see your daughter since they moved back here? I have um, reached out to try to contact Madison or anybody in the same thing, either I'm blocked or just not responded to. Now, prior to the allegations coming out, was there any paper, there was any uh, criminal, I'm sorry, um, court filings that you were made aware of uh, in regards to um, child support before the outcry came out? One more time. Was any <laughs> was there anything filed with the courts prior to the allegations coming out? No, sir. Were you aware that there was something filed near the time that the allegations came out? Um, yes. Um, like when they filed for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was here on a child support case and it was filed on the same day. And? My child support was lowered on that day. Justin was here, and then that's when they filed. I assume, I say, filed on the same day in the paperwork. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Um, when you and Wardell first got together, was Justin pretty upset? 100% yes. <laughs> um, was there ever a time that you received messages from Justin regarding you going to jail regarding child support? Yes. 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 That's from here, sorry. No, overall. Does it bother you that you don't have the same relationship with your daughter that you used to? Yes, it does. Some may ask why you've been put in a position where you have to believe your daughter or your boyfriend. Yeah. How have you come to the conclusion you have regarding what did or didn't occur? I just know that I was there for most of these parts and I believe him because I can see it with my own eyes. I mean, I saw it. I've seen how she's been raised with us when we're all three together, how she's acted. And I don't believe it one bit. I have no doubt that that didn't happen. 
I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. State. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Lewis, let's go back. Um, you have, you said three other children? That's correct. Um, so were they over at the house when Madison? No, ma'am. Uh, where were they? They weren't in the state. Okay. Um, did you have custody of them or? One of them, my two other children were not custody of me. No, just Tyler, but he was, he was with my mom in Virginia this whole time. Um, you testified early that earlier that Justin broke up with you and kicked you and a baby out of the house. So you went to live with Wardell. Um, is that is that baby Madison? That is Madison. So you're saying that you, when you first moved out from Justin, Madison was with you. That's correct. How long was she with you as a baby? Um, I don't know, on and off. Um, she mainly stayed with me until they got that child support order when she was like four or five years old. Okay, and that child support order, to be clear, you. You agreed to that. It was an agreed order. Yeah, to see my kid every other weekend, it was agreed order. Okay. Yes. And um, you're aware that there was a child custody part of that agreement. Yes. And you're aware that if you didn't do that, that they could file for an enforcement of that. It was Correct. the right. Yeah. So. And when you say baby, how old was Madison? I don't know, I'd say under, under five. Okay. Um, does, uh, would, would it sound right that she was around three or four when you signed over? Probably so, right? yes. No. Okay. Are you aware that um, accusations of drug use have come up again about you? We object, Your Honor, to relevance. All right, that'll be our world. I'm yes. sorry, what was your answer? A yes. Um, When was the first time you were aware of that? Um, probably the first custody issue we had. Which was when? When that first custody came in, uh, maybe three or four, like you said. Um, he would just be like, you know, my daughter's not going to stay with you because you're with a drug dealer or you're doing drugs or something. Okay. Um. So um, how often, so is it your testimony that you never left Madison alone with Wardell? There is a few times I've left her. Um, um, maybe once or twice. Maybe once or twice. Um, under what circumstances? I was um, maybe going to... <laughs> Really don't know. Um, I don't know what the like not alone to where it's overnight or any of that. Maybe if I ran to the gas station in the street and came back at that. Okay. I so, mean, she never spent the night alone with Wardell. Okay. If you are a hundred percent sure that Wardell would never do anything like this, why didn't you feel comfortable leaving her alone? With Wardell. Well, why would I need to? It was my weekend to babysit her. So 
you testified earlier that you had every other weekend off. That's correct. So if Madison had testified that in fact, you would actually take her to sit at work while you were working, would that be incorrect? No, ma'am, that would be correct. Okay, so come. if Madison testified that there were also days when you would go to work and you would you would leave her with Wardell, would that be incorrect? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and it's your opinion that Madison saw the defendant like a dad? Yes, ma'am. Why didn't you call the detective back when she called you about this case? Honestly, the first time that I saw that, I did not contact her. Um, by that time that I did notice, she left a voicemail and responded to uh, Wardell had already talking to her and he said that we I'll were- Object, your honor, to hearsay. Sustained. Okay. Um, if you were so sure of Wardell's innocence, wouldn't you want to tell the detective that? Well, yeah, but not without a lawyer. I mean, I don't know what the detective is calling me to say. Why would you need a lawyer? Why would a detective be calling me? I have no idea. I mean, I didn't know what she was calling for. Well, you're aware that there were allegations that your boyfriend had sexually assaulted your daughter, right? Dustin put that in a text a few times, yes. Okay, and so, and you're wondering why a detective is calling you? That's the question. I mean, no, I knew that it was for Madison after the fact that, you know, Wardell got the same phone call and from Detective Brian. So why didn't you want to talk to Detective Brian? It's not that I didn't want to. I was going to when I got the lawyer, whoever I decided that I needed. Excuse to Excuse me just one second. Could you all come forward, please? All right, state. Okay. Um, Wardell, you said had a t-shirt business? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> um, how much did he get paid as part of that business? I'm pretty sure it's by the t-shirt order. I really don't know that part. Okay. And you said uh, your work, so Frollo's gets their t-shirts from them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how long has that been in place? Um, getting t-shirts from, from, from yeah. us? Uh, since I worked there in 2015. Okay. So, or 13, sorry. Okay. 13. So for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, um, I still make them this day. Okay. Um, what other uh, businesses do they make t-shirts for? Uh, I don't know whoever they gets called. I know there's some, I don't know. It's just different businesses that contact them on Facebook or just contact them in general to make other little printed shirts or to a hundred to, you know, 400 shirts. It just depends on who that person is. So does he have regular working hours? Um, not necessarily for t-shirts. Um, it was during the day, I mean, during the week, not like a set nine to five as me, I go to work at four to 11. That's not a, you know, a time for those shirt shops. It's just when they were able there to make shirts. Okay. Um, Is, um, are y'all, um, how's the di division of resources? Are y'all pretty 50-50 as far as income? Um, who, who pays most of the bills? Wardell. Wardell pays most of the bills. Mm -hmm. um, as in like rent, car, insurance, okay. I pay electric, water. Okay. You know, we so, split food. Um, and, and your testimony is that you, you weren't even able to make child support payments as is, right? Um, not the full amount. I did make child support payment, but not the full amount. Okay. Um, 
you said that you, you would see Wardell and Madison playing video games. Where in the house would they play video games? In the game room. Um, it's an upstairs two story. Um, like this is Madison's room. This is our room. This would be the game room. Okay. It all connects. Like, so where, okay. So it's a two story. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So where is your bedroom? If you go up the stairs to the left is ours. To the right to Madison across from the hallway. And then the game room would be in the middle where the stairs face this way on this side. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing the kitchen's probably downstairs. Downstairs, correct. Um, how many hours would they play video games? Not very many. I mean, a, an hour or two or, you know, whenever he would be playing video games at night, you know, she would want to play something. So, you know, we'd play Forza real quick, let her drive around Forza World, if anybody knows what Forza is. Um, okay. So not very long. What about Grand Theft Auto? Uh, Grand Theft Auto was a big one, yes. Okay. Um, and what's the furniture in the game room? Mm -hmm. Or what was it? Um, it's still the same. <laughs> uh, two couches this way, this way, two TVs, and a desk. Okay. And so typically, where would uh, Wardell and Madison and yourself sit? All three on the couch right here. Okay. Um, did you see um, Madison sit on Wardell's lap? Several times. Was that a pretty common thing? Yeah. I mean, what kid doesn't sit on somebody's lap? Okay. Did she sit on your lap? Yeah. Okay. Um, you said you would go bowling? Uh -huh. Um, how late would y'all be out bowling? Um, probably till about nine or ten. Okay, so um, never till three a.m. I don't think it's open till three a.m. Okay. I mean, never past like midnight, honestly. So it's it's your testimony that once Madison left San Antonio, they blocked you. Um, yes, that's right. Um, but it's also your testimony that she loved Wardell like a father. Correct. So why would she block you? Well, I don't think she's the only one that's blocking people. I just said I was blocked. I didn't really say Madison blocked me. Okay. So. Did, did Madison block you? I don't know. Okay. Did you reach out to Madison? Yes. When did you reach out to Madison? Um, her birthday was last week. She was 16. I said, hi, I missed you. Happy birthday. And then immediately I was blocked. Okay. Um, did you wish her happy birthday on her 15th birthday? Yes. Did you ever attempt to talk to Madison about the allegations? Um, if I had a chance to, but just, I haven't had contact with her since then. Okay. Um, is it safe to say that pretty much all the information you have about this case is from Wardell? All the information that I have from this case? Yes. I have from my own eyes. Okay. But as far as what the allegations are? Correct. Yes. Okay. Or the attorney. Okay. Um, so you're aware that the allegation is that he placed his hand underneath her underwear onto her vagina. Correct. Um, how many conversations have you had with uh, Wardell's attorney? Um, today or ever? Any? A few, a couple, I, a couple times. Every time we come down here, there's a conversation. Okay. So um, you knew more or less what the questions were going to be. Yes.
Are you aware that Madison said she didn't tell because she was scared to tell you? I didn't know that. That she was scared you wouldn't believe her? I mean, I can't talk. I haven't talked to her in six years, probably. <laughs> Are you aware that she was scared that she would run into you here in San Antonio? I was hoping she would. Did you see her today? I did. Where? In the hallway. I'll pass witness. Defense. Just briefly, Your Honor. How did you feel this? to see your daughter in the hallway. I mean, I was happy, you know, sad. It was too. <laughs> um, have you ever had an opportunity? Well, something was made up about or brought up about a, um, a spring break visit that uh, Madison had. That's correct. Um, or any other time frame where she may have stayed with people other than you was there ever any occasions that that occurred yes and who um, would she have stayed with shauna shauna who uh stevens which is a friend from my work how long have you known shauna the 10 plus years from frollo's and does he, she have any children she does she has two and what are their names uh Alyssa stevens and uh madison stevens so there was Madison and Madison. Yes. <laughs> Did they hang out together? Yeah, all the time. They were in that picture that's over there. May I approach Yarn? Yes. That's exhibit number eight. Is that the picture you're referring to? That's correct. <laughs> the two girls holding his leg? Yep. No, that's both Madisons? That is both Madisons. I mean, was that typical behavior for yep. the Madisons yep. with Mordell? Yep. Happy as can be. Attached to him. Nothing further, Yarn. Anything else? Yes, briefly. So how long did you leave her with Shauna? Um, just why I went to work. It was like a, a shift. Um, we'd pick her up that night or she would spend the night one night and I'd pick her up the next day. Okay. So you felt comfortable leaving her with Shauna, but not Wardell? Yes. No further questions. That, that time that you left her with Shauna, was Wardell available? Um, I'm sure he was. It's just, you know, Shauna's mom had a pool and Madison was there. So best friends want to hang out. That's the reason. And you were asked, you felt comfortable leaving her with Shauna, but not Wardell. Can you explain that? What she just said? Yes. Um, I don't know what that means, but I mean, I wasn't uncomfortable leaving her with Wardell at any point, but I mean, she wanted to go over there and yeah, you know, she can swim while I was playing at work. She didn't have to worry about, you know, staying at home, doing nothing besides, you know, playing video games and doing inside things. She could actually go outside and be with her friend. So let me ask you this. If there were ever a time that that would have come up where, hey, look, I got to leave her at home with Wardell for an extended period of time. Would you have done so? 100% still do it to this day. Nothing further. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, you would still do it to this day, even though by your own admission, the only facts or allegations you know of this case are from Wardell. That's correct. Nothing further. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, is this witness excused or subject to recall? Excuse, Your Honor. Subject to recall. 
All right, the rule has been invoked. What that means, you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys with the state of the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You can thank step you. down. And if you can make sure you pass that exhibit yes, to the court reporter. Yes. Defense, call your next witness. Defense, we call Shauna Stevens. If you'll take a seat here, please. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand, have a seat. Uh, just make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter and uh, the jury can hear. Okay. If you'll state your name for the record and please spell it. Shauna Stevens, S-H-A-U-N-A, -A, Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. -E All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Stevens, do you know Amanda Lewis? I do. Do you know Wardell Lemon? I do. How do you know Amanda Lewis? I met her working at Follows. And how long have you worked together? We worked together for about three years before my dad had a stroke. And then? And then after that, we were just remain friends. Okay. Um, and so you started off as coworkers and are continuing to be friends. Yes. Okay. And your friendship as a whole, how long do you think you've been friends? Uh, 10 years. Now, let me ask you, um, how do you know Wardell Lemon? Through Mandy. Is that what you call Amanda Lewis? It is. Sorry. Um, do you have any children? I do. How many? I have three. And how old are they? Uh, 23, 21, and 15. And what are their names? Alyssa, Samantha, Madison. Now, when you um, became friends with Amanda, did you know that she had a daughter named Madison as well? Yes. They, that was that kind of a bonding factor for the two of you? Yes. Did your children ever play together? Yes. My youngest, Madison, and Madison uh, became friends. And uh, what kind of stuff? Well, I guess, let me backtrack. Did y'all ever hang out together as families doing activities? Yes. What kind of stuff? Um, playing video games, Littlest Pet Shops, uh, coloring. Um, the typical indoor stuff. Um, did you ever go to each other's houses? Yes. Um, so you would go to where, where Wardell and Amanda live? Yes, that was the majority of the time. Did, did they ever come to where you live? Uh, just a couple times. Okay. Um, was there ever an occasion where you watched uh, Madison at your house? Yes. Uh, do you remember when that was? Uh, I don't remember the exact time frame. Um, I know the girls, I took them swimming. Okay. Do you remember, like, not the time frame, but was there anything, the, the time of year it might have been? Spring. Okay. Um, were you aware that, I guess, um, had you ever met Amanda's, um, well, Madison's father, Justin? I have not met him personally, no. Um, did you ever know that there was ongoing things between them in the courts? I did um, would Amanda talk to you about these things? Yes. Did they cause her any stress that you observed? A lot of stress. Okay. Um, how did you observe Madison, Amanda's Madison, get along with Wardell when you ever, you had these activities together? Well, they were great. I mean, they played, the, um, I mean, nothing ever out of the ordinary. They would laugh, have a good time. Did she ever seem scared of him? Never. I mean, now, obviously, most of these, well, tell me, were these occasions that you observed them in public or at the household? At the house. Okay. Um, so it would just be, I guess, who would be at the house during this time? Uh, it would always be Mandy, uh, Wardell, me, uh, and some of the time, my daughter. 
Uh, and which daughter are you referring to? Madison. Okay. And would the other Madison be there too? Yes. Okay. Uh, was she there often at their house or not often? No. Okay. Um, what kind of things would they do at Wardell and uh, Amanda's house? They would play in a girl's room with the castles, toys. My Madison and her Madison would. That was, and then on the iPad, they would play on the iPad. How did your Madison ever have any interactions with with Wardell? Yes. And anything about those interactions cause you any concern? Never. Um, did you ever get any feelings from Amanda that she had concerns about Wardell being either alone with her Madison or any concerns about how he treated her? Never. You're aware of the allegations that are here today. I am. And um, based upon your experience, um, do you believe those to be true? I do not. Okay. Now let me ask, and, and I'm talking about your experience in observing Wardell and Madison. Um, when you first heard about the allegations, what was your reaction? Shocked. And why was it shocked? Because um, I'd never, I have three daughters and I'd never seen anything to lead me to believe that. So just, it was shocking. Mm. Where, when you first became friends with Amanda, do you remember how old Madison was? Her Madison? Would have been around five or six. Okay. Um, was she, to your knowledge, still living here in San Antonio? Yes. Were you aware whenever she moved away from San Antonio? Yes. How did, how did that affect uh, Amanda whenever she moved away? Greatly. She was depressed for a long time. Um, from what you observed, did she try to make contact with her daughter? She did um, through the stepmother. Were there times that she did see her whenever they lived in Houston? And what I'm saying in that question is uh, whether it was in Houston or San Antonio, she saw Madison at some point when they were living in Houston. I can't recall. Okay. I'll pass witness, Shauna. State. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Shauna, um, you uh, you were asked to testify on the defendant's behalf. Yes. Correct? And um, have you been in the courthouse all day? Uh, this afternoon. Okay. And were you outside with um, Amanda earlier this afternoon? When I got here, yes. And um, did you watch a portion of this trial on a YouTube feed with Amanda? Um, I was told that she was supposed to have it off. And that was all I know. And were you present when it was played? I was for about 20 seconds. So that's all you saw? Yeah. Um, and now there, there was testimony that um, uh, Amanda would ask you to uh, care for um, Madison uh, sometimes while she was at work, correct? Right? Um, how often would that happen? I only did it twice. Okay. And um, how long would you uh, watch Madison for? I'd say around four to six hours. So it wasn't very long. It was evening. She worked evenings for uh, waiting tables. Why wouldn't, um, if you're aware, why wouldn't Amanda leave uh, Madison with Wardell while she was at work? Justin was not letting her at all. In order for Amanda to see Madison, she had to be with her the entire time. Okay. And are you aware that there are times that Amanda testified to that she did leave uh, Madison with Wardell? I'm not aware of what she testified to. Okay. Um, do you know of any times when Amanda would leave Wardell at home alone? No. Okay. Um, and you said that when you would watch Madison, um, y'all would play video games together. Is that right? On the iPad, I didn't, but our daughters did. Okay. Um, do you know what kinds of games they would play? Um, I don't recall. It's been too long. I just know it was on the iPad. Okay. Um, and you said you've never met Justin, correct? Correct. And um, have you ever met his uh, his current wife, 
Linda? One time. And have you spoken to her um, since these uh, allegations came out? No, sir. Um, have you talked to Justin or Madison since these allegations came no, out? No, sir. Okay. So it, it'd be correct to say that all of what you know about these allegations come from either Amanda or Wardell. Is that correct? That would be correct. Okay. And you said that um, you have three daughters, is that right? I do. And you've seen them interact with the defendant? Yes. Have you ever left them alone with the defendant? Yes. Okay. Uh, how many times? Many times. And have they been left alone with the defendant or have you just left them at the defendant's house with Amanda? Both. Okay. And um, would uh, how often would you or you and your family um, go out with the defendant, Amanda and uh, Matt? There was no going out. It was just hanging out at the house. Okay. Um, so you never went bowling with any of them? I did not know. Okay. Right. We'll pass the witness, Your Honor. I think it's probably Your Honor. All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? Excuse, Your Honor. All right, the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. Uh, you're only allowed to speak to attorneys for the state or the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You may step down. Defense, call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, defense would call Madison Moore. Uh, no. Does anyone need a break? I see you. All right. So we're going to take a break. Uh, I'm going to have you all come back at 415. Remember, you've heard some, I'm sorry, just have her wait outside for one moment. You've heard some testimony in this case. You're not allowed to discuss it amongst yourselves or deliberate or do any investigation. Everything you need to know about this case will come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right. I think that this case may end up resting today. So are you all okay with going past the 430 if we can rest today, which would mean uh, closing arguments would happen tomorrow at 9 a.m.? Is everyone okay with that? Yes. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors.
Madison Moore, Your Honor. Ready, Judge? Yes. All right, to the jury. Uh, defense, call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Defense will call Madison Moore. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear, affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand if you state your name for the record and spell it. My name is Madison Moore, M A D I S O N M O O R E. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madison. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So, uh, my name is Mario Moreno. Uh, I am co counsel for Wardell Leonard. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. If uh, at any point in time, I ask a question that you don't understand um, or any want me to rephrase, just let me know. If it's something that you don't know the answer to, please let us know that you just don't know. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, this is being recorded, so please make sure that all answers are uh, verbal, no head nods or, or anything like that, because um, the reporter is unable to note head nods or mm hmms or okays, or I'm sorry, or uh-uhs. Okay. All right, thank you. Madison, how old are you? I'm 15. 15 years old. Do you know Amanda Lewis? Uh, Mandy. Uh, Mandy Lewis, is that how you know her? Yes, that's how I know her. Okay. Uh, how do you know Mandy Lewis? Um, she's my mom's friend. Mom's friend. And, and who is your mom? Shauna Stevens. Shauna Stevens. Uh, do you know Wardell Lemon? Yes, sir. How do you know Wardell Lemon? Also my mom's friend. And do you know uh, Madison Keeney? Yes, sir. How do you know Madison Keeney? Um, I know her because my mom got together with Mandy and Wardell, and we became friends because we were hanging out at the same house. We'd hang out together. Uh, at what age were you? Uh, what, at, yeah, at what age were you when you met Madison, if you can remember? I'd say probably around five or six if I had to guess. And at what age were you when they moved away? Madison moved away with her family. Um, I don't know. You don't recall? I don't recall. Okay. But uh, is it safe to say that you were under the age of 10 when you were friends with Madison? Yes, sir. Do you remember a, a lot about your, your friendship with Madison? Most of it, yes. Most of it? Uh, When you were hanging out or playing with Madison, uh, where were y'all? We were mostly in her room. So it would be at Wardell's house? Yes. Did the two of you ever uh, play or hang out at your own house? Uh, we did once or twice, maybe. Um, Mandy was there. Or, um, but yeah. But for uh, a majority of the times when you were playing with Madison, it would be at Wardell and Mandy's house. Yes, sir. What, what sort of things would y'all do there? Um, we would play on her iPad or we would play with her giant Barbie house. Um, we'd watch TV in her room sometimes. Um, that's pretty much it. That's what we would do. Did the two of y'all ever play with Wardell? No, we would go in and watch him play, but we never played with him. When you were hanging out with or playing with Madison, um, was Wardell around very often? Uh, most, of the most of the time. Besides when we were in her room, he was playing games in the other room. Okay. So when the two of you were alone in her room, did he ever you know, try to sneak in and, and be alone with the two of you? No. At any point in time, did did uh, you ever 
um, experience any issues with Rodell in, in terms of any inappropriateness or, or him being creepy in any way? No, sir. Um, and so would that apply to the way he was acting with you and Madison or just you? Both of us. Both of us. Or both of y'all. At any point in time, did you ever feel uncomfortable being around Wardell? No. Uh, were you and Madison, would you consider yourselves at the time close friends? Yes, sir. Did she ever indicate to you at any point in time um, that Wardell was being creepy or touching her inappropriately? No, she did not. How did you feel whenever uh, Madison moved away? I'm sorry? How did you feel when Madison moved away to uh, out of San Antonio? I was a little upset because I lost a friend, but I eventually got over it. I mean, I was young. I had friends of my own. Did the two of you stay friends? No. Were you made aware at some point of the allegations uh, from this case? Yes, I was. When you learned of those allegations, uh, about how old were you? Probably around the age of 12 or 13. How old are you now? 15. Oh, you did mention that. Thank you. Um, how did you feel whenever you heard uh, what the allegations were? Objection. Relevance, Your Honor. How, how, how did the allegations make you feel? I was shocked. More in disbelief. I couldn't imagine him ever doing anything. And why is that? He just wasn't the type of guy to. He was super friendly, super fun to be around. He never really touched us inappropriately. He would give us hugs, but he wouldn't, it wouldn't be weird. I felt comfortable around him. So when I found out about it, I was more in disbelief. After Madison moved away, um, did you and your family still spend time with Wardell and Mandy? Yes, we did. Uh, were there any days or times where you were alone with Wardell? Um, maybe once or twice. Well, my mom and Mandy went out to go grab something. I would sit in the room with him and watch him play games. During those times, uh, did he ever do anything inappropriate with you? No, sir. Did he ever uh, make you feel uncomfortable? No. We'll pass the witness, Your Honor. State. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, Madison, um, you said that you were alone with the defendant maybe once or twice, right? Yes. It was just you and uh, the defendant? Yes. Okay. Um, did he ever ask you to sit on his lap? No. Um, did he ever ask if he could massage your belly? No. Okay. Um, and you said you found out about these allegations about two or three years ago? Yes. Um, who told you about the allegations? My mom. Uh, have you spoken with um, Madison um, since you learned about the allegations? No. Um, have you ever met her father? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, so the only person you've heard about any of the facts surrounding this case is from your mom? Yes. Okay. Um, and your mom is close friends with uh, Mandy? Yes, she is. Um, now, the times that you would... Um, play with Madison over at the defendant's house. Um, you said you played on, on the iPad? Yes, sir. What kind of games would y'all play? Uh, we would play games where we would make cakes or we would like, it was like ice cream shop games where you would pretend to serve people ice cream. We would play, I think it was called Fruit Ninja at that time. Or just some fun, silly games like that. Okay. Um, did you ever play uh, Grand Theft Auto with Madison? Were you allowed to play those kind of games? I was, but I was never interested in it. Okay. Um, and you said you haven't talked to Madison in about six years, right? No. no.
Um, did you ever see uh, Madison sitting on um, the on the defendant's lap anytime? No. no? Would it um, be a surprise to you that the defendant asked the uh, asked Madison to sit on his lap multiple times? Objection. Would be your say. That'd be overruled. You can answer the question. It would be a surprise to me. Why would it be a surprise? Because he never, he just wasn't that type of person. He kept to himself, sort of. Did your um did your mom ever go out alone with um the defendant and Mandy? I don't know. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Defense. One moment, Your Honor. No further questions, Your Honor. Um, All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? She's excused, Your Honor. Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. All right. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state of the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. Defense rest this time. Here. State. State closes. Defense. Close. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard all the evidence you're going to hear in this case. Uh, what will happen is I'm going to have you come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. And at that time, I'll read what's called the charge of the court. And both parties will have a chance if they choose to give closing arguments to you. And then at that time, you will be allowed to select a four person and begin your deliberations. But for now, you're not a start, start deliberating in your head or talking to each other or talking to anyone about this case. Does everyone understand? If you see anything, you are to ignore it and not look at it. You are not to do any investigation. Everything that you need to know about this case comes from inside this courtroom. Does everyone understand? Yes. All right. So tomorrow, because it's 9 a.m., Thursday, we still have other jurors coming here. So to be assured a spot, you probably should get here about 830. So you have a 99% chance of getting a space. I do have a docket in the morning, but I'm going to take this case first and then I'll do the rest of my docket after you hear closing arguments. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors. Oh, please be seated, seated. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the proposed jury charge printed out for you all and give you all the chance to look over that and then let me know if there's any additions you want or any objections you have. Okay. Sounds good, Yarn. What has already been prepared for me?
All right. Have both parties had a chance to review the proposed uh, jury charge state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection to the jury charge state? No. Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Then closing arguments will begin tomorrow at 9 a.m. And each side will have 20 minutes. Okay. Is that enough time? Too much time? I believe that's enough time, Judge. Is yeah. it too much time? No. 15 minutes? <laughs> I mean, I think 20 is, is sufficient, Your Honor. It's 10 minutes less than Bordier, so I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone want a time announcement? Um, yes, if I could have a, a two-minute warning. Same, Your Honor. All right. Well, I will see you all tomorrow at 